Hey folks, we are here at the awe.tv and I am hanging out with Mark Billinghurst, who, if you don't know about AR, Mark is the man. <laughs> You've been at this conference for the last four years, Mark, and uh, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you. So, Mark, um, you know, you are an AR guru. I, c I can say that, and you know that's true, but I just want to say it anyway. Um, what What's changed since the first time you've been at this conference, four years now, and now you're here? What changes have you seen taking place? That's a great question, Joe. So there's a lot of changes. First of all, the number of people and the exhibitors have just exploded. But I think the two big changes are, first of all, the uh, technology has now got into the commercial uh, market space. And you've seen some great examples of companies that are making real money off AR and using AR in very exciting business opportunities. And the second area that's changed is that the input and output devices have become a lot more usable. You've got technologies like Google Glass that make uh, wearable displays more um, wearable, and you've got 3D input technologies like the Kinect or the Leap Motion that make it much easier to reach out and grab and interact with AR devices. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about Hit, Hit Labs and just kind of where, where you guys have been moving also. That's a great question. So we're a research institute at the University of Canterbury. We have about 50 researchers, which makes us one of the largest AR research groups in the world. And over the last 10 years, we've been working on AR in New Zealand, and we've, we've done a lot of things. We, we have developed a number of open source toolkits that will build their own AR experiences. Most recently, what we're looking at is using AR for outdoor experiences. So we, we've developed applications that can superimpose buildings on the real world and other content. And also, we're, do, we're doing some work now on gesture-based interaction, so people are able to use their hands to easily manipulate um, AR content. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting that you said that because about two years ago, I think you were, you were doing a presentation, and you were talking about you know separate augmented reality objects that were appearing, and how one can let's say run into the other mm -hmm. and 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 affect them. Has that changed a lot since the last time you spoke about that? Because we're, we're, you know, we're talking about interfaces and now you just mentioned the gesture. Sure, so certainly it has advanced a lot. So when I was talking about it, you'd have two uh, virtual models interacting with each other, two AR models, but there was very limited opportunity for the user to interact with the content. They would normally have a mouse or, or some physical object to interact with it. But now, because of the gesture input technologies, you can now reach out and use your hands to interact with those models as well. So it's not just interaction between the content, there's a lot more realistic interaction between the user and, and, and the content as well. Gotcha. Now have you spoken yet or are you going to speak? I'm speaking tomorrow morning on, on Wednesday morning and I'm going to give a talk about AR and design, which is still an area where, where there's a lot of work needs to be done in the community. A lot of the AR applications you see aren't very well designed, especially from an interaction perspective, so I'm hoping to help um, change that a little bit. Awesome. Are you are you uh, co-presenting with anybody else? No, it's just all me. It's just you. Yeah, just it, me. It's your show, baby. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Very nice. So, what are some of the things that you hope after this conference, as you as you go back to New Zealand, New Zealand, and as you work with all of these other developers, and you know, and obviously working with the universities and, and that sort of thing, what are some of the improvements that you hope to make, you know, for within the next year as you come back? Next well, year. one thing we're very excited about is making it easier for people to build AR experiences. You know, Ten years ago, you need to have to be a programmer, but, and even now, there are some good tools out there, but it's still hard for children or people that don't have experience with software to, to create their own experiences. So we're doing some research about how you can get people that aren't programmers to create AR experiences. Then the other thing we're, we're very excited about is, again, back to the gesture input, and, and looking at how you can combine not just gestures, but also use speech as well at the same time, and that people can speak and create AR experiences from both their speech and, and gesture input. That's great. Tell me a little bit about the university, and you know, I was speaking to a, a professor from uh, um, NY Poly, or, or you know, he was talking about talking to his students and about asking them about do they know about AR, and mm -hmm. he said a very small portion are. Are you seeing that from from your experiences, you know, in the university? Are is it starting to catch on for our young college kids? Are they understanding the power of this technology? It's becoming a lot more popular. And, and at our university, we um, I teach a course in AR. In fact, it was one of the first courses in AR in the world. So a lot of the students in the computer science program know about the course or know of AR through through the course. But certainly, people on campus, uh, as the AR technology is spread to mobile devices, they become a lot more aware of it. And they see things in the, in the movies, or they see a variety of AR campaigns that have been shown in the press or, or on the web, and they get, get to know through that as well. So it's become a lot more popular. So it's quite well known now. Mm -hmm. 
Now, did, you saw Bruce Sterling speak earlier this morning. Right, yeah. Uh, and one of the things he said, he said he was stunned at where things are right now for 2013. Mm -hmm. Where do you stand on that? Well, he, he's um, certainly things are progressing very quickly, but I, I've been doing AR for about uh, 18 years now, and so we're seeing now things that uh, in reality that I dreamed about you know, 18 or 20 years ago. And I think what we're starting to see is, is we're at the inflection point of kind of a hockey stick. And so what you'll see is that the, um, the pace of innovation is dramatically increasing and it's going to keep on increasing. So if he's stunned now, then I can say that in two or three <laughs> years' time, he's going to be flabbergasted. One That's of the other great. speakers this morning, uh, Tommy, talked about how you know, by 2020 there'll be uh, potentially a billion AR um, Users, users out there, and that's you know that's a huge number of people. So it's just, we're just at the start of something really big, I think. Are you seeing an increased demand of uh, you know people calling you up, uh, media attention, um, different uh, you know venture capitalists? I mean, are you, are you seeing a, a change, you know, a bigger change in the last year, or you know? Definitely, I would say in the last two or three years, I think that um, there have been a lot more interaction between businesses and and universities um, looking for AR solutions. So we, we get people all the time calling us saying. You know, can you build us an AR application for us or tell us about how we can do this kind of AR application. So now because they've seen AR technology in the media, they want it for themselves and they come to us to help with that. And, and we, there's also a lot of um, business opportunities in terms of sta creating startups. Our lab have created five startups in the AR space over the last uh, four years and there's a couple more that are incubation and, and there are a lot of interest out there in the community to join those startups or, or to fund them as well. You know, I, I saw a few young, like college kids that were here today. Mm -hmm. One of them was wearing Google Glass, and uh, you know, these kids are pumped. Do you have any advice for any like a young college kid that wants to get involved in AR? Where, what's the where should they start? Where's the first place to go? Well, two levels of advice. First of all, they should follow their heart. And so, previously, you know, if you want to be involved in AR, you pretty much have to do computer science to become a programmer. But that's no longer the case. You know, if you're a a very creative person or you know an artist or a, a writer or an engineer or a developer you can, because the AR space has broadened so much you can get involved in with all those skills in many different areas you know, if you're a, a 3d modeler then of course we need people in the AR community that can build content if you're a storyteller you need we need people that can create compelling stories if you're an engineer we need people to build devices or if you're a programmer we need people to build SDKs so it's really fantastic because 20 years ago, you had to be in computer science or engineering, and now you can follow whichever field you want to, but right. still blend AR into it. You know, there are people like yourself who are law enforcement and doing AR as well. So, so um, I think the first most important thing is to follow their passions, and then I would think find a group of like-minded people. So you may have you may you may be an artist or an illustrator or, or a writer who's got a fantastic idea for AR, but you can't build it. But pretty sure at your university there's somebody in the engineering program or somebody in computer science who can help you build it. And they're looking for people like you who've got those ideas to build, to combine with them. That's great. I mean, I, I think Mark, you hit a, the nail on the head. Is that you know we tell people regardless of what your love and passion is, AR somehow can fit into it. Right. It doesn't make a difference. You know what you like. I mean, if you like worms, you could probably find <laughs> an, an AR worm finder at some point. That's so right. uh, you know, and, that, and that's really I think the beauty of it. And uh, you know, coming here to this conference, and I've listened uh, to you speak many times. You do an uh, amazing job. What, what, are, what is the easiest way that people can learn more about Hit Labs online or where well, should they, they go? Well, they can learn online. Also, we've, we've developed a number of um, exciting apps that they can download from the um, iPhone or, or Android um, app stores. Um, and so they can certainly try our technology before they... Um, Any particular names of some of the apps? Well, there's a, a brand new one we're just releasing at the, uh, the conference here called Colar, C-O-L-A-R. And this is a, a coloring book application where you can take a blank uh, coloring page um, with, it, with a drawing on it and then you can look at it with your phone, it becomes a 3D model. But when you color the model, when, when you color the drawing, the colors you apply on the blank page get applied to the 3D model. So that's wow. your customer. So if you know, one application is you can see a, a shoe and you can color the shoe with your own designs and then you can see the colors come to life and the 3D model of the shoes there that you've done. Great. And that just got released on the App Store uh, this week, so it's brand new. Okay. Yeah. How much does it cost? It's free. It's free. So just call AR, C-O-L-A-R, or you can just look for uh, Hitler NZ and you'll find it. Of course, our website's a great resource, and then YouTube is most of the the, um, the demos that we have uh, have been filmed, and they're on YouTube. And then finally, if people want to get more technical, um, if they go to slideshare.net and look up my name, they'll actually find all the coursework I've taught in AR and all the talks I've given on AR on slideshare, so they can find more. That's great. So you're here. making all of your talks available publicly to anybody who wants. Oh yeah, to sure, definitely. Yeah, that's and, great. And, and software toolkits, so they can go to the uh, Hit Lab website and they can download 
uh, software that they can try and build some stuff themselves. Super. Yeah. Mark, you are the guru. <laughs> thank you so <laughs> much, buddy. Great, I really appreciate it. Great, thank you. Best of luck to you, buddy.